In a world of rising climate change and global uncertainty, one question rises to the forefront. How does a small island nation secure its food for the future? Singapore, where innovation meets necessity, is forging new paths to answer that call. Singapore's unique context as a small, highly urbanised island city-state necessitates a different approach to developing our agri-food sector. With over 90% of our food imported, we are vulnerable to global supply chain disruptions. Despite these obstacles, Singapore is committed to growing this sector sustainably. Our approach emphasises supporting the industry to leverage high-tech, resource-efficient methods to maximise output while minimising environmental impact. As we work to build a resilient agri-food sector, aquaculture plays a crucial role in meeting our food security needs. Seafood is a vital source of protein for our population. As Singapore expands its aquaculture production, protecting its marine ecosystems becomes a crucial part of the equation. In Singapore, we have very rich marine biodiversity coral reefs, seagrasses, fishes, and many other reef animals that are of value. One of our key challenges is development, the constant anthropogenic effort that is ongoing here to basically build up Singapore. To balance our conservation and development, we actually have multi-stakeholder groups, one of which was the Friends of the Marine Park, where we work very closely with government agencies and different stakeholders, such as boaters, fishermen, local divers, to come up with solutions and discuss emerging issues and that really gave birth to one of our key marine parks called the Sisters Island Marine Park here in Singapore. Sustainable aquaculture is particularly important because good quality water equals good quality fish products. So whenever you have other toxic materials entering the water, you will affect the fish and you will decrease the amount of quantity as well as quality of the fish. Singapore is a highly urbanised, small island city-state. In fact, the only one in the world and we are highly dependent on our coastal and marine environment. This is a reality we cannot shy away from. So what we have done is we have safeguarded representative key habitats located around our coast and our coastal waters. And we have also implemented strict pollution and development control measures. This allows our water quality to remain clean and healthy and in turn support a rich and healthy marine biodiversity. Some of these include the designation of marine parks, long-term habitat monitoring of coral reefs and seagrass areas, species recovery of iconic and keystone species like the Neptune scup sponge, marine sea turtles and hard corals, as well as applied research to look at the long-term sustainability and survival of biodiversity in the face of anthropogenic impacts and climate change. We can ensure that aquaculture can be sustained to safeguard Singapore's food security for the long term but at the same time, ensuring that safeguards are in place to protect and conserve the marine biodiversity in adjacent areas. To balance biodiversity, conservation and aquaculture production, Singapore has launched the Singapore Aquaculture Plan as a living roadmap designed to drive innovation, collaboration and long-term productivity and sustainability in the sector. The Singapore Aquaculture Plan sets the blueprint for aquaculture sector to develop sustainably and productively for many years to come. We spent one year engaging various stakeholders and brought together a diverse group of people that represents how we want the industry to grow. By bringing leaders and experts in their respective fields together on this journey, the SAP has created opportunities for open and frank discussions to build trust. In my view, trust is the most important ingredient that has allowed the SAP to come to fruition. While we may have a different start point, our end point is all the same. Adopting an outcome-based and science-based approach then allows us to get the aquaculture sector to develop in a more sustainable and productive way. One of the ways of moving forward using an outcome and science-based approach is the idea of a nutrient budget. What this means is that a body of water can contain a certain amount of dissolved nutrients before the microenvironment gets compromised. What the stakeholders have agreed upon is to adopt this nutrient budget concept so that farming and microenvironment maintenance and sustainability can go hand in hand. 
The Marine Aquaculture Centre was established in 2003 with the primary goal of catalyzing technological development in tropical marine aquaculture to deepen expertise in sustainable practices. MAC is where science meets sustainability, creating innovative solutions that ensure Singapore's aquaculture industry thrives responsibly. Singapore faces three key challenges in aquaculture. Number one, limited space. Second is fish disease. And the third is impacts on the environment. Sustainability is at the core of MAC's R&D efforts. Productivity is also another. To achieve both objectives, we are looking at several programs, one of which is the Selective Breeding Project to produce sea bass fingerlings, which are faster growing, disease resistance, but yet at the same time with sufficient genetic diversity. The second program is on the aquaculture sensing network to be able to monitor the water quality in parameters such as dissolved oxygen, temperature, pH, salinity, and this information will be useful for the farmers on how to manage their stocks. With a vision for the future, aquaculture farms are embracing technologies that boost efficiency and could pave the way for more sustainable aquaculture practices. Boat has developed a sustainable farming system. We use RAS, which means we recycle and reduce the usage of water. Boat also developed a three-in-one farm to table solution. We farm the fish, we process the fish, we also cook the fish, all under one roof. We do not have to move the fish from place to place and it reduces carbon footprint. Singapore is a land scarce country. Instead of farming at the seaside or in the sea cage, we farm it in the industrial estate. So it saves a lot of space. By moving indoor, we will not be affected by the weather and the environment. The first innovation that SAT used for fish farming in Singapore was that we put an RES system together which is floating on the sea. We made that work with industry automation and apply machine learning for data analytics. What we understand under sustainability is carbon neutrality, reducing carbon footprint with short distances to our consumers and reducing waste the way we operate. The main aspect in protecting the environment around our farm is the discharge and achieving zero waste. So we try to collect everything that we filter in our recirculating system and we also have an approach to denitrify the nitrate-rich water that would be otherwise discharged in the environment. This is a very important innovation that make it possible to scale up our operation. Singapore's journey in aquaculture is just beginning, shaping a future where sustainability and productivity coexist for long-term food security. We are committed to ensuring that aquaculture coexists harmoniously with our rich marine biodiversity, safeguarding ecosystems that sustain life both above and below the water. Our focus is not just on increasing production but on ensuring that future generations can continue to enjoy healthy marine environments and abundant locally produced seafood. The challenges Singapore faces in building a sustainable and productive food system are multifaceted and interconnected. And in fact, the challenges we face are not unique to us. Climate change and disease that can impact fish affects any other players in different parts of the world as well. If technology and innovation can thrive in a difficult environment like Singapore with limited space and resources, this living lab concept that we have here can be applied to larger global ecosystems. The Singapore Aquaculture Plan is not a one-off initiative, but a living roadmap that will continue to refresh itself as the community expands and transforms. It is in working together that we can achieve an outcome that is greater than the sum of our parts. Let us all work together to keep aquaculture sustainable and productive.